Today's lesson, today's word is coming out of the book of the gospel, the book of Mark. Mark and Mark chapter number eight. Mark chapter number eight, verse number thirty-four. It reads this: And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Uh-huh. Can you just repeat after me? How, How to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. And you got it right there in verse number 34. Here's what he says. Whosoever will come after me, he says. Coming after means to follow, all right? Come after me. He says this right here. Let him deny himself, take up his cross, and do what? Follow, follow me. Amen. How to follow Jesus. Yes, he laid it out right there, but it really has some breakdown going there within the text itself. Here, Jesus has have, 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 uh, gone through different areas. He healed a blind man, and, and then um, uh, while they were, were walking in verse number 27, Jesus went out and his disciples in the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and by the way, he asked his disciples, saying to them, take a listen to this, whom do men say that I am. And they answered John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? You know, Jesus wants to know who you say he is, not what other folks say. You know, see, she say and he say. So he want to know what you say. And Peter stood up and answered and said unto him, thou art the Christ. And he charged him, them that they should tell no man of him. He is the Messiah. Look at 31. And he began to teach them. And the Son of Man must suffer many things and re- be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, he said, rise again. And he spake though that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. You know how it is when you rebuke somebody? Not like you rebuke the devil or nothing like that. You begin to tell him, you know, no, 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 this is not going to happen to you. No, no way. Uh uh-uh. uh. You are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. No, 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 this is not going to happen. Here's what Jesus said. He, he, look at verse number 33. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me. This is how you rebuke Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. You know what he called him? Because of how he was acting. Uh, what was on the inside of him and, and it, it, the way he was talking. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. So let us know that Jesus don't want us to save or to, or to hold on and latch on to the things of men. He, he wants us to latch on to the things of God. Amen. And when he had called the disciples, called the people, and unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever Whosoever. And you know, it starts off with whosoever. Whosoever includes all who think they are inclusive and exclusive. That's whosoever. Whosoever is Whoever, whosoever is an individual who decides, who elects to. And he says it right here in verse number 34. Yeah. Whosoever, whoever that person may be, rich, poor, black, white, it doesn't matter. Whosoever, he says this right here, will come after. 
to me. So regardless how rich a person may be, he could be a billionaire, he could be a president, y'all. You still got to follow. You know, following is one of the hardest things that a person can do. You've been around folk that don't want to follow, right? I tell you what, look in your rearview mirror sometime. There's some folk that don't want to follow. Because what's happening, they feel as though you're going too slow. And, if, and, and for people like that, that feels as though that you're going too slow, that means they're supposed to be the leader. Isn't that right? That's right. They're, t- they're part of whosoever's also. But whosoever, he says right here, it doesn't matter who they are. It includes everybody. He says, whosoever will come after me. They all have got to be a follower. So everyone in there, everyone in here has got to follow. We've got to, we've got to follow. We, we all follow. I mean, following is important. It's important. And it's important to know who you're following. That's the other thing. Because everybody just can't lead. Imagine if you had a, a whole, you know, during Thanksgiving, ladies. What if the whole kitchen was all full of cooks? Uh, <laughs> some, you know, something, something ain't got to go right. You know, somebody got to take charge there. Yeah. What, 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 what if you had the husband and wife and, 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 and both of them want to do the, want, want to do the lead? Hey, I, I know what it's said, you know, it's, it's 100% both ways, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I understand that. But you got to have your leader, you got to have followers. A leader without any followers is just, I heard Bishop uh, Patterson, I mean, uh, Bishop uh, J.O. Uh, uh, Patterson Sr. say this, a leader without any followers is just a man taking a walk. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, when it comes to following, it's, it's important for us to, to really acknowledge and understand, understand where God has put us. Uh, a lot of us were in the military, and, and we understood about following leadership. We understood about that. When people ran in formations, they had to line up. And when you line up, you got to come behind somebody. And then the important thing about that is that is that you have a leader up there. He was a guide. And a lot of times they would run. And when they run, they run sometimes real fast. Supposed to run the, 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 as, as, as fast as the slowest person. But they run real fast sometimes. And what that does is pushes people. Uh, but the thing is, they're always mindful that people are going to drop back or going to lag behind. So what happens is that, no, they don't slow down. What happens is that they turn around. And come back around. And the other people that were behind, now they're where? Up front. And they're being pushed, encouraged. Let them know, you can make it, you can do it. Come on. So then, you're never left behind. So the importance about following is that you're always with others to encourage and to continue on and to push one another. Well, here, the whosoever... They got to follow also. Those who are so called leaders or say they're leaders, they have to follow. Here, look at this right here. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. <laughs> so Jesus is saying, if you're going to follow him, he said, first of all, you got to. Deny yourself. I just wanted to also say this one other thing about following. I have to really take a look at that because sometimes that can be a bad word to some people. But follow is the go or come after or pursue. Obey. And here's what I thought was really good. Just come out of a regular dictionary. Keep one's attention fixed on. Keep one's attention fixed on. Because when we do that, we're, we're, we're following, amen, what our, uh, whatever our attention is fixed on. You see, the Bible tells us that we are to keep our mind stayed on him. He will keep us on per- in perfect peace. That we are to keep Jesus as our focus. 
He's the author and the finisher of our faith. You see, he's the one. He's the focus. He's the one who we should be following. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. And when it comes to deny, not only is follow sometimes a hard thing to do, but also denying yourself is a hard thing to do. It's proven even this past holiday of Thanksgiving. The majority of us stuffed ourselves <laughs> with stuffing <laughs> and dressing and, and the works. Denying ourselves, pushing back. <laughs> Whether it's from the table or from anything else that sometimes that don't do us no good. So we got to deny ourselves. Ourselves is important to us. We hold ourselves up sometimes. But the Bible, what Jesus is saying, he's saying deny yourself. Because when it comes to self, self is when we have this self-preservation about us. That I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to manage this. But here he says deny yourself now if we deny ourselves that means that if we that, that means that we're giving ourselves to something or someone else he says right here if you're going to come after me you got to first of all deny yourself deny yourself of what of who you are now I'm, I'm kind of bringing military thing back up again and, and here it is when, whenever a person, lady or man went to boot camp they had to deny themselves of who they are in order for them to be reshaped into what they want them to be you see when we went into service we couldn't have the same attitude we had while we were out of service because when we came in, we had to come in and we had to give ourselves up, denying ourselves. Jesus said, deny yourself. If you're going to follow me, deny yourself. All the things in which we do, knew for ourselves and know for ourselves and did for ourselves and, and, and all the things in which we have accomplished, what he said is deny it. Paul helps us out with that. All of his accomplishments... He said he considered that as nothing because he put his all in Christ. When we are to do that, then we are denying ourselves. Not saying that we're not going to take care of ourselves. What we're saying is that basically I'm denying myself because of the fact I want Christ to be all that he can be inside of me. Amen. Yes. So he said, look, Whosoever will come after me, he says, let him deny in himself. And then not only that, but he says, after we deny ourselves, he says, now you should, you should take up your cross. Taking up this cross. What is a cross? A cross is a pole or a cross. A, it's an instrument of capital punishment, a stake, a post. Uh, uh, set up right. Y'all remember Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. Uh, uh, something that's lifted up and something that is, someone that is put upon it as a ways of a, a punishment. And not only that, but it's also said when it comes to a cross and that punishment, it was exposure to death. Now, with that exposure to death, with that being upon a cross, that itself was denial. Guys, you have to give yourself up to that. And that's what Christ did. If Christ can do it, he said, I want you to do it. If you want to follow me, if you want to follow me, you've got to deny yourself. Guys, when you deny yourself, that's the only way in which you're going to be able to amen, get on that cross with me. To understand why I'm there. In order to get on the cross or to pick up your cross, you've got to have denied yourself. Because that cross itself bears the marks and the hurts and the 
evils that were done to Christ. He tells us to take it up, to pick it up. And when we do that, then everybody would know that you belong to him. And then once that's done, then all the ridicules, everything comes at your way. But in order for you to face that down, you've got to deny yourself. Because if you don't deny yourself, when they throw different insults at you, when they do all that stuff to you, you're going to go right back at them. And then you'll know you have not denied yourself to follow Christ. Denying yourself is to put away all the pride. Denying yourself is to put away all that stuff that, 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 that you thought got you where you are. Denying yourself gives you the strength to carry the cross. Christ carried his cross. Not only did he carry his cross, but he got hung on the cross just for us. So Christ, he tells me, he tells me, he said, he said exactly what's going to happen. Now he's, hey, look, not only did he say he's going to die and then three days later he's going to rise again, but he also said, look, here's what I want you to do. If you're going to follow me, I want you to do this. Deny yourself because he said, that's what I'm doing right now. Then carry your cross. He said, that's what I'm going to do. And if you do those things, he says, then you can follow me. If you can just get through that. Sounds simple enough to deny yourself and to pick up your cross, take up your cross and follow him. But the path that he took, can we really follow that path without denying ourselves? I know not. Think not. It cannot happen. In order for us to walk in the way, capital W-A-Y, in order for us to follow him, we cannot do it unless we deny ourselves. So who can follow? Whosoever. What must I do? Deny self. Take up your cross. That's what we got to do. And then what it says right here, he says in verse number 35, he says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And look at 38. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So who can follow him? Whosoever. What must I do? Deny self. Take up your cross. But thirdly and lastly, what we have to do in following Christ is not just simply denying ourselves, not just simply taking up our cross and following him, but also going and making disciples. It's one thing about sitting there and doing nothing once we've accepted that gift that he has given us. You know, Christmas, when you get that box or that gift and it's wrapped real pretty and, and it's just going to sit there, you're just going to hold it for the whole year. Or you're going to rip it open just to see what's in it. And what's in it, then you're going to use it. What Christ is saying is that he's given us the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's unwrapped for us. He's inside of us. Yes. Now he's saying, go and use him. Allow him to use you to go and make disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is someone who's going to follow someone. Well, what are you going to tell that disciple? You're going to tell the disciple the same thing Jesus told you. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. 
and follow Jesus. That's what we ought to do. And this repeats itself. Cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle. Until when? Until Jesus comes back. But is that all we have to say? That's all you got to say. What else you got to do? Well, now they're right there with you telling the same thing. And now you're, what you're doing, you're just getting bigger, stronger in the word. Amen. And continue telling folk about Jesus. About the one in who you're following. Because if you're going to follow anybody, you're going to study him. You're going to learn about him. You want to know about him. Amen. Jesus said, follow me. In our Sunday school lesson, it, 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 it wouldn't say come. Come, come, come. So you can thirst no more. Mm -hmm. Here, he says, follow me. We're to tell people to come and follow him. Just repeating himself time and time again. Telling somebody that don't know him about Jesus Christ. Amen. Just simply telling them to come. Invite them to church. Just come invite them to sit down for coffee and, and talk about following Jesus. Yeah. How to follow Jesus. It just starts with denying yourself. Having a mind knowing exactly that you are thirsty, that, that, that you are, that you need him. And then you can go on, continue to go into letting them know that once they receive him, then that thirst will be quenched. And then they can turn around and go and invite someone else to come. How to follow, to follow Jesus. Amen. We follow Jesus, first of all, by giving, up, giving ourselves up. Amen. When we give ourselves up, then we become strong enough to carry the cross. Amen. When we're carrying that cross, when things come our way, the troubles of life, tribulations, trials, Issues and all the kind of stuff. We'll be able to deal with those issues with the cross. Where? At the cross. Why at the cross? Because at the cross, that's where I first received my sight. Huh? Is that it? At the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. There, faith, I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the way. Are you happy today? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, and it was there by faith. I receive my sight, and now I am happy all day. Because Jesus Christ died for us. On the cross, he died, he was buried, and he rose the third day morning with all power in his hands. And that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, that same spirit resides, abides, lives within each and every one of those of us who accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So we have just that same resurrection power inside each and every one of us that raised Jesus from the dead. So there is nothing that we cannot do for God. So we can go and tell a dying world that Jesus lives. Amen. It's not you. It's the Christ. It's the Christ that is in you. It's the Spirit of God that is in us. That empowers us. That leads us. That guides us. We just have to continue to deny ourselves. Continue daily to take up our cross and to follow Jesus. I must tell you this. It's a daily, a daily decision. Your name is written, but it's a daily. Your name is in the book of life, Lamb book of life, but it's a daily decision to take up your cross. To deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him. Amen. How to follow Jesus. You can do it.
God bless you, saints. Amen. 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 Amen.